Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Ticket. In today's video, I'm gonna share 50 plus tips, tricks, and features to customize your brand new and shiny Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. So let's dive in and get started. Let's maximize the ownership of this smartphone. Now, the very first thing I want you guys to do to actually name your smartphone. So go to the settings, all right? Go all the way down and then go into about phone. Now, once you're in the about phone, you tap on edit right over here and you give your phone a unique name. Now in my case, I can just name it as you can see, Saki Tech. So what happens is when you name this phone this way, when you try to use this for Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections, that's the name that's gonna pop up on other devices so you can easily recognize it. Next thing I wanna talk about is that little number right there. You can see it says number one, okay? So that's because we have one notification uh, on my mail application right here. So it says one. So what you can do with that is, if you don't want it to show you the exact number of notifications, you can pinch the screen, you can tap on home screen settings, and then what you wanna do is you wanna go to app icon badges. You tap on this one, and you can switch from number to dot. So now when I go outside, you'll see we have a little dot right next to the mail application instead of telling you that you have one notification. Another quick thing is when you tap on the Recents button, it brings up the recently used applications right here, as you can see. Now at the bottom, you have a bunch of applications that appear based on your recent usage. So what you can do if you don't want these, if you can tap on this button here, go into Settings, and you can say Hide Suggested Applications. You tap on this one, you'll go back outside, you tap on the Recents button, and the suggested applications have now disappeared. So that's great. Now the other thing I like to do immediately is when I pull this down, I want it to pull down the notifications panel. By default, what happens is this is what's happening. So let me just disable this feature. By default, when you swipe down, it goes to your app drawer. When you swipe up, it goes to your app drawer. So that's highly redundant. So you do want to pinch your screen, tap on the home screen settings, tap on swipe down for notifications panel, all right? And then when you swipe down, it brings the quick toggles and the notification panel, as you can see, makes it much easy. Now when you swipe up, app drawer, swipe down, notifications panel, fantastic. Now here's another great quick tip. Uh, you see this Google search bar here. What you can do with this, guys, you can tap on the G, okay? It takes you into the settings. Then you tap on more, Okay, and you tap on Customize Widget. You tap on this guy, and you can, from down here, modify this. You can pick different colors, as you can see. Okay, let me go for the uh, green color, just to give an example. Tap on Close, Close. Also, what I can do is I can tap on this guy, and I can have it say Google or just G. So that's fantastic. When you're done, you tap on Done, tap on Got It. You go back outside, now you got to customized Google widget, something a lot of people use. Let's go back, all right. Now one more huge thing you wanna set up real quick is if you go into your settings, now with the Galaxy S20 FE, you are getting 120 hertz motion smoothness, the refresh rate. So you go to your settings, you go to your display, and here's the option known as motion smoothness, all right? So when you tap on this guy right here, you can choose between 60, which is standard, or high, which is 120. Now, if you go for standard, what's gonna happen is you are gonna get slightly longer battery life, but the smoothness factor is gonna disappear. So even though the phone is gonna be fast and snappy, it's not gonna feel as smooth as when you have this set up to high refresh rate. With this one, it's gonna feel smooth as butter and it's gonna be a snappy phone. You're gonna love that experience, but it is gonna be up to you. Like I said, if you wanna save battery, you can go with standard, if you don't care about the battery, you want the best and the smoothest animations, you go for high and that's it. And one more thing you can do with your home screen is when you press and hold on any application on the home screen, it's gonna bring up the shortcuts menu. From here, you can do a lot of things with the individual app or you can make modifications to your home screen. For example, let's say I wanna move these four items from this screen to the next screen. Let's say I create a brand new uh, page here, that page is empty, but I wanna take four of these applications or items and just dump it right here. All I do is press and hold, select the item, 
select all the items together, press and hold, and now they're all bundled together. I can move it right over and dump it right there. Absolutely fantastic way and quick way to customize your home screen. All right. Also, if you press and hold, you can remove a given application from here. Or if you press and hold again, you can tap on app info and that's going to go to the app info page to give you information about a particular application. Now with the folders, I want to show you something real quick. If you tap on a folder real quick, you can customize its color. You can tap on this item here, uh, that circle, and then pick any color you want from this color palette or the preset colors, as you can see. Now your folder has a custom color so you can distinguish it between different folders. For example, finance can be green, red can be media and stuff like that. Again, tap here, tap the circle, pick any color that you want. Also, if you want to add items into your folder, tap on plus and pick the applications you want to transfer into that folder. It's going to show up right here. All right. Now, one more thing I like to do is when I pull this down, what I want to see is I want to see a brightness slider right here. Normally, you have to pull it down twice and it shows up right there from where I can adjust my brightness, which is not a problem, but I like to see it on the top when I pull it down just once. So all you do is you pull it down, you tap on the three dots on the side, you go to quick panel layout, and then you tap on show brightness on top. Now, when I tap on done, let me go home. I'm going to pull it down one time and I'm going to have a brightness slider right here. Easily change my brightness on the go right from there. Well, this phone has two stereo speakers on the top and the bottom. You want to make sure you get the best sound quality possible. So what you want to do is you want to go to your settings. All right. And then you want to go into your sounds and vibration and you want to scroll down and go into sound quality and effects. You tap on this one and you want to make sure you enable Dolby Atmos. You enable this. You're going to get much more high quality sound from the stereo speakers. And on top of that, if you tap it again, you go inside, you can choose to enable Dolby Atmos specifically for movies, music, or voice media, okay? But you also pick auto, and that's gonna just pick everything automatically. Now you go back over here, and you also wanna make sure that Dolby Atmos for gaming is enabled, so when you're gaming, you also get the best sound quality. And finally, for people that are into sound more than the others, maybe audio files, you tap on the equalizer, and you can pick custom equalizers right from here or customize the one as you please if you are into this kind of thing it's an option that's available i just give it at normal for now next thing you want to customize is your navigation buttons at the bottom so what you want to do is you want to go to your settings you want to go into your display scroll down and go into navigation bar you tap on this guy and look at this i have the back button the home button and the recents button i can swap the order the back can be here, recents can be here, that's going to be up to you. I like to keep it this way, but if you don't like buttons at all, what you can do is you can go to the full screen gesture mode that is going to disable the buttons and it's going to give you the gesture navigation system. So you pull up to bring up the recents, okay, just pull up to go home. And if you're in a certain particular setting, uh, let's say you're in display, you can swipe to the right to go back, okay? So that's gonna replace the back button, go into the home, and of course, bringing up the recent options as you can see. Again, that's gonna be under display, okay? And it's gonna be under uh, navigation, and you have all these various choices. You can even go here to swipe gestures and tap on more options and further customize your navigation gestures based on your needs. For example, I tap on this one, now I have three arrows at the bottom. This one is for recents. This one is for going home. Okay, actually, let me do it again. That one is for going home. Let me just bring it up again. And this one is for going back, just going back, all right? But I like to keep it in buttons mode. So I'm gonna go over here and choose uh, the buttons. And that's the way I like to have it. But it's all gonna be up to you. Now, one more thing, when you swipe to the side over here, what you have access to the Samsung Daily now this, once you set it up, it's going to give you the latest news and entertainment news as, as soon as you swipe to this side. Now, personally, I don't like that. Okay, so what I like to do is pinch the screen, swipe over, 
and disable Samsung Daily. Now when I swipe over, there's nothing there, which is great. Now I do want to give you two quick tips with your, in relation to your camera. So I want you guys to go into your camera. The first thing you can do is if you're in a photo mode, okay, what you can do is you can just grab the shutter button, just grab it. Just grab and move it and put it anywhere you want on the screen. So when you're holding the phone a certain way, you have that shutter butter that you can tap on to take a quick photo. And the one that's over here is going to stay there as well. But you have a second setting uh, to tap on. And also, when you're done with this, you can just grab it and put it back where it belongs. So that's fantastic. Number two, I want you guys to go to your settings over here. Go all the way down and make sure you enable grid lines. Now, when you enable the grid lines, your camera is going to get these uh, grid lines. So when you're taking a photo, you're going to be better able to align your shots. So that's going to be great for better photo taking. All right, let's move on. The next thing I'm going to talk about has to do with your lock screen. So let me lock the phone real quick. Let me turn it on. We're in the lock screen. On the top, you see time and date. What you can also do is you can swipe this over. You can access your music player. If you swipe again, you can access your routines. It's a little hard to see, I know. If you swipe over, again, you can uh, see your clock and your, uh, your, the date. Now, let me show you what's happening over here. Let me double tap, log in. If you go into your settings, and if you go into your lock screen, all right, all you want to do is you want to scroll down and go into face widgets. You tap on this guy, and this is what we were looking at. So I'm going to enable all my face widgets right here. That's exactly what these are. These are on the top known as the face widgets and I can enable a bunch of them. That's my calendar. It says take medication. Uh, that's the alarms if I have any, any set. I can see it right there. And then I got my weather information. Okay, if I, I can set that up too. And then I got my routines and I got my time and my date. Again, if you go into your settings, it's gonna be under lock screen, under face widgets, and you can customize all this stuff based on your needs. You can even tap on this button and reorder them. So if you want the weather option on the top, you just move it to the top. If you want the music option at the bottom, you move it to the bottom, all right? So that's a great way to customize your lock screen. Now, while we're talking about the lock screen, there's one more thing I wanna talk about. Let me lock it up. At the bottom, you have two shortcuts. Normally, to access them, you just swipe on them. For example, if I wanna access the camera, just swipe on it. It's a quick access option. Now what I can do with this is, I can go into my lock screen settings, again, under settings, lock screen, scroll down, go to shortcuts, you tap on it, and you can change those two applications. So the left shortcut, I can change that to calculator. Let me just pick it up from here. And the right shortcut, just let, leave it as a camera for now. Now when I go back outside, I have quick access to my calculator. There we go, I just log in, boom, gets dumped right into it. Or, like I said, you have quick access to your camera. But the point is, you can customize these as you need using the left and the right shortcut option. All right, so that's great. Let's move on to the next tactic. The other thing I wanna talk about with the lock screen is what you can do is you can tap on the contact information Put in any text, a quote, whatever you want, your name, your number, and you can say, in my case, it's going to show up at the lock screen right underneath the date over here. It's going to say Saki Tech. On top of that, I can tap on clock style, all right, and I can pick a different clock style for the lock screen. I tap on this, all right, and I have all these options as you can see. Look at those custom options. The good news is I can tap here go to color, and even pick any color that I want. So let's go with black color for now. In fact, it's easier to see, it's a nice contrast there. Now when I go back outside, it's gonna be a black clock icon on the top, and I got my signature right there that says Saki Tech at the bottom, all right? Now this is a large phone, a fairly large phone. You have 6.5 inch screen size. So what you can do is you can go to your settings, okay? You can go into your advanced features right over here, and the next thing you can do is you can actually activate the one-handed mode. So if I tap on one-handed mode, let's just enable this, and look at what happens now. What I can do is let me just pick the button option. 
I'm gonna double tap and now the phone has minimized itself. I can use the entire phone with one hand because the screen now is much smaller. Now I can left justify the whole screen. Again, I can do everything right here on this small screen with one finger, okay? Or if I'm right-handed, I can have it on the other side, no problem. And I can even resize it to tweak the size. Maybe I like this size better, okay? There we go. Easy to use the whole phone with just one hand. When I'm done, tap the black area and you go back in business, all right? You got the full display. All right, so let me show you something really cool here. Let me go to the settings over here. Uh, scroll down, go to advanced features. And what you wanna do is you wanna go into your motions and gestures. When you tap on this, there's so many options in here that are very useful. One of them is double tap to wake the screen. That's enabled right now, so when the screen is turned off, if you double tap it, it wakes up the screen, you can log right in. If you did not have this enabled, all right, and you try to double tap, it's not gonna work. It's only gonna bring up the always on display. So tap this, make sure double tap to wake is enabled, and also enable lift to wake. So if you enable this guy, and if you turn off the phone, what happens is I can just grab the phone, lift it up, and it's gonna quickly show me the display and give me, I can look at quickly look at my notifications that's the lift to wake uh, option. And the final thing that I have here under this setting is if you look at this one, easy mute option is amazing. So enable it, go inside and look at this. So let's say somebody's calling you and you don't want the phone to ring. All you do is you grab the phone, you put it on the table like this and it stops, it mutes the alarm or it mutes the call so it doesn't have to bother you anymore, okay? or you can just put your hand on top of it. That's gonna mute the call or mute the alarm. So you have that option in there as well. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I wanna give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks to fully customize your phone and make it your own. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.